So today's session is about printmaking, in particular a technique called monoprint. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a monoprint and the students are then going to make a whole series of individual prints based on a set of instructions that I've given them for the session. So I've given the students a set of mini design briefs which they're going to answer in the next hour or so. Um, and they're going to explore monoprint and come up with 20 designs of their own, all of which in some way connect to their own specialist subject area. The art course here is an experimental one, hopefully also fun. Uh, the students are encouraged to make discoveries through playing with materials and processes and are also encouraged to make mistakes. We like mistakes in art because mistakes are what gives us the new stuff. Okay, so the tools and materials for monoprinting are all quite straightforward and simple. Um, what we have here is some ink. This is a water-based block printing ink. We have some rags, which are really useful for clearing up. We have a roller, which I'll show you how to use in a moment. Uh, we have a metal plate here on which I'm going to roll out the ink. I have a stack of different sorts of paper, uh, ordinary printer paper and newsprint and various other sorts. Uh, and I have an array of different drawing implements here. So I'm going to start with some ink, uh, which I've rolled out on my plate here. This little bit of ink here is a bit too sticky to make the print, so I'm going to transfer it onto this clean plate to roll out a much smoother, more sort of velvety block of ink. roller down. We always put the roller down upside down so that we're not transferring ink onto everywhere we're working. I'm going to drop the piece of paper on top of the ink and now any mark that I make on the back of the paper is going to be picked up. Now I can draw with all sorts of things to make marks in the ink. I can use a conventional tool like a pencil but I can also use more unconventional things and all of those things will have an effect in picking up the ink and making us a print on the other side of our paper. I'm going to take this image from a magazine and I'm going to trace it onto my paper. Hopefully, we should have a nice little print of our figure. Now one of the things about monoprinting is you also get other opportunities from it. Um, so you can see here that the action of tracing the image has left this kind of hole in the print where I now have a negative image. And I can also take a print of that. So, I'm just going to try a little experiment with a bit of colour. Taking a felt pen, I'm just going to apply a little bit of colour to my paper. Just in quite a sort of random way. There you go, negative print with a bit of colour added. And that basically is how to take a monoprint. It's called mono, by the way, because of course we get one image. Um, you'll also notice that the other thing about most printmaking techniques is that you end up with a reverse image. So we have the negative and positive print of the original image, which again you can see has come out as a reverse image. So uh, shall we have a look and see what the students are doing? So Mitty, can you tell us something about what your art classes are normally like? It's 
it's very interesting because it's really different here than in my country how is it different like in our country we just uh, do stuff like uh, slow drawing that must be perfect but after coming here i have learned that nothing should be perfect uh, what matters is not the painting or something it's just the way we think about the uh, art the way we think how we will go going to make something that is what matters and i really like it so i it's really interesting for me and what are you hoping to do next year um, next year i'm doing uh, my b i'm starting my ba in interior designing in uh, ual fantastic yeah, thank you so this is Bermit, who is from Kyrgyzstan and who next year will be progressing to architecture at London Metropolitan University. Um, her project, her final project, is about the idea of the labyrinth, uh, which is why the prints she's making now have all got some connection to mazes and labyrinths and labyrinthine structures and so on, which you can see beginning to happen on the table. What are you, what are you trying to do at the moment? Um, I have a pattern from the Gucci bag. Nice. And it's, um, the pattern is uh, kind of connected with my project, so I wanted to okay. make a print of these uh, patterns. Cool. Yes. How does this connect with your final project? Um, from my uh, from my final project, I'm uh, I'm cutting like uh, the patterns more like uh, look like plant. Yeah. And, um, I think. So these, these kind of organic sort yes, of shapes. Yes, okay. organic shapes. Okay. Okay, so this is Derek, who is going to study fashion design next year at university, uh, and who seems to have found a very unique way to treat the monoprint. Derek, yeah, explain to me what you're doing. Actually, I'm doing the I'm running the paper and I put the, the some paper under the under this this piece of paper, and I want to find more shape from from the from this paper, like three three D dimensional. Okay, and do you have an example of a previous print you've made using that technique? This one. Oh, okay, cool. Very nice. Okay, so the students are currently um, engaged in the last term of their course uh, where they produce an exhibition, which is effectively their kind of exam. Um, this, the exhibition will reflect their interests and it will reflect the work they're doing towards their specialist subject. Um, we have students who are studying architecture and fashion and graphic design and fine art and so on. Um, the exhibition will be in this room. The room will be turned into a little gallery. Um, we'll invite people along. There'll be a private view and the students will show their work. And it's the first opportunity for students to understand how to curate their work alongside other people's work in an exhibition scenario. How do you feel about showing your work to the public? I think it's kind of worrying, but I like it because it's kind of things that it's really important for me this year because it's my first exhibition and I think that I need to be, I think it will be successful. And what are you doing next year? Next year I'm going to study fashion at Ravensbourne. Fantastic. Thank you. I've been teaching Art Foundation students for around 18 years. I studied fine art myself. I work here three days a week and the other two days of the week I paint and I draw. I'm a professional painter and a professional cartoonist. I think it's really important that the students are taught by people who are themselves engaged with professional practice. The students are here to prepare for university, so they're all progressing to different subjects. Some to architecture, some to fashion, some to graphic design, some to fine art. So we, it's very much a tailored approach. This year we have had two groups in the art room. Our September cohort was 16 students. The current students who are working towards their exhibition now, we have seven in the group. Um, and what this means is that we can give the students a lot of one-to-one -one attention. and We can tailor our advice to the students based on their chosen specialism uh, and on the individual projects they're undertaking. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and this quick taster of what an art class in the UK might look like. If you're interested in studying art in the UK, then please get in touch. 
Thanks for watching.